Well, good morning. Welcome to worship with us this morning at Barclay View Fourth Church. Whether you're here uh, in the building or you're watching us online, you're very welcome. Uh, today we have visitors uh, in the building from Jamaica, from Grand Cayman, from Florida, and uh, from China. And if you're visiting and I've missed you, then I'm terribly sorry. You can let me know where you're from uh, later. But all of you who are visiting today are very welcome. Uh, and at the end of the service, we have tea and coffee and a time to chat uh, in what we call the pillar hall, but the area that you came through to get into this, uh, this part of the building. Um, and uh, if you have time, it would be great to have you there uh, and to get to, uh, to chat with you a bit further. Uh, just to let you know that today uh, is our last Sunday of the, the term for, uh, for Kingdom Kids for the summer, but there will be something for uh, our children and young people each Sunday throughout the summer. So don't just think, oh, school's off, I'm not coming to church. That's you lot, right? I'm just making sure that you know there will be something for all of you. So, oh, there was a, oh, great, great, right? It will be really good, right? We could do with one or two more adult helpers uh, for that. If you are willing and able, then please see Ray. Where is Ray? There's Ray in the corner. Give us a wave. So, just in case you didn't know who Ray was, Ray is our uh, youth worker. And if you're able to help during the summer for one Sunday, please let Ray know. Uh, that would be really good. Uh, for those of you who are watching online this morning uh, particularly, I need to remind you that today um, we are having communion, and uh, uh, you may need to nip off and get some bread and wine uh, during one of the, uh, the songs, um, and then uh, that means that you can join us when we get to that point in the service. So as well as communion, uh, we also have the opportunity today to say thank you and, um, and to give uh, some uh, gifts to our young people uh, and also to the leaders uh, who have uh, helped them uh, and been with them uh, through the year. Uh, and we will do that towards the end of uh, our time together. So it's a little bit of a mix uh, today, um, but I hope that you will bear with us uh, and that God will speak to each of us in the time that we have uh, together today. We're going to start uh, by singing uh, a song. Um, it's My Lighthouse, and uh, I believe we have some actions uh, at the front, and then Ray uh, and some of the children are going to lead us in prayer.
here? Yeah. So um, today, this is the last um, Sunday before school um, goes to the holiday, and um, we're going to thank God, and we also drew pictures, and could, yeah. So could you explain what you draw and what you're thankful to God? Okay. Go. I draw um, my friend Jordi and, and God and, and this little person down here is, is, is me and I'm a baby and these are fire crazy things with me. Mm -hmm. So you are thankful to God? For oh, you wrote the. Do you wanna read it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thankful for friend Joji, and yes, this yeah, is Georgie. this is Joji, and that God is this, with. This mm -hmm. is God. Mhm. Mm and this is me. And those are your five pieces. Well, ah, beautiful. And, and these are the flowers. Great. Yeah. Okay. Just move them along with it. Can you move along to the middle so everyone can see you? Move along, move along, move along, move along. Good, thank you. Good, okay. So do you want to read this with me? Okay. I'm thankful. Thank you. To God <coughs> for my friend Georgie and, and this little person down here is me, and these are the five questions. What? Great, thank you. Amen. 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 Okay. Ellie, do you want to do the next one? So, this is me at school, and these are my friends. Mm -hmm called Giselle and Zara, and this is my family. Oh, I see, so you're thankful to your friends and family. And, yeah. Great, hey, thank you. Ethan? Stand up. I am grateful for my friends at school. Friends at school. And do you want to hold that picture? And show it to the people? Yeah. Friends. Good. Do you want to do Rachel? Can I read it for you, Rachel? I just have a look at it then. I am thankful for all of the toys and my friend Jessica and my teacher, Miss Douglas. Go oh, and look at the lovely picture. You hold it up high so everyone can see it. Yes, doggy stickers. Right, your one. What does your one say? Do you want me to read it for you? Yeah. I am grateful for getting lots of play at school so I can pretend to be a horse. I am grateful for the food. And Jesus loves, I love you. From Kitty. You hold that up, Kitty. Sure. You hold it up really high. And then one. Yep. Do you want to go I am grateful for the the teachers at school. Teachers at school. Do you want to hold it high so that everyone can see? Let's go sit down again. Okay. Let's go. Yeah. Lily comes to read to us. Let's stick all that together uh, and let's pray. Our Father, we thank you so much that we have an opportunity to be together today. We thank you that you, know, you give us teachers, you give us people who care for us, who want us to learn, who want us to grow, who help us to develop skills and abilities that are going to be useful for our whole lives. We thank you for uh, Sunday school teachers as well. We thank you for parents and grandparents and family members and friends who show love and concern for us. We thank you that we are your children, 
What a huge privilege it is to be a son or a daughter of yours. Father, we are so thankful. We ask that you will be with us in our time together today. Amen. And then we have our reading. The reading is taken from Exodus chapter 4, verses 1 to 5, and then verses 10 to 17. Moses answered, What if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, The Lord did not appear to you? Then the Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? A staff, he replied. The Lord said, Throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake and he ran from it. The Lord said to him, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. So Moses reached out, reached out and took, out, took hold of, of the snake and it turned back into a staff in his hand. This, said the Lord, is so that they may believe that the, that the Lord of the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. The Mo- Moses said to the Lord, Pardon your servant, Lord. I have been eloquent, ni- neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue, the Lord said to him, who gave human beings their mouths, who who make, makes them deaf or mute, who, who gives them sight or makes them blind. It is not I, the Lord. The Lord, now go. I will help you speak and I will teach you what to say. But Moses said, pardon your servant, Lord. Please send someone else. Then the Lord's anger burned against Moses and, set, and he said, what about your brother Aaron the Levite? I... I know he can speak well. He is already on his way to meet you, and he he will be glad to see you. You shall speak to him and put words in his mouth, and I will I will help you help both of you to speak to speak see you to speak and and will teach you what to do. He will speak to the people for you and it will be as if he were your mouth and and as if you were God to him. But take the staff in your hand so you can perform signs with it. Now I am hoping that everybody has a lollipop stick. Or most people at least. If you have a lollipop stick, you're going to need it shortly. Uh, Sorry to the camera guys who I've just confused by moving. So here we are in the middle of the story because we've cut into the middle of the story. Moses, some of you may remember, when he was born, his mum put him in a basket and put him in the river and let him float away. But God had a plan and God said, ah, I'm going to save the baby. So Moses grew up with Pharaoh, having all of the education and all of the really good things of Egypt, but he also had his mum who said, remember, you belong to God. And then he did something dreadful. He thought that he would be able to make God's plan work faster if he just did it himself. Do you think that was a good idea? No, you're right, it was not a good idea, because he ended up murdering somebody. And then he had to run away. And he ran away to the desert. And he was in the desert for 40 years. And then one day, he was in the desert. And as you do, he was just wandering along. The sheep were there, and he was looking. And then he saw something. It was a bush. And the bush looked as if it was on fire. But when things go on fire, like my barbecue yesterday, (laughs) what generally happens is they go black, don't they? They get burnt. If you leave something cooking too long, that's what happens. But that wasn't happening to this bush. So he went over to see what was going on. And it turns out that this was God, and God wanted to speak to him. And so 
God has said, I've got this plan for you. I want you to go to Egypt and I want you to lead my people, the Israelites, from Egypt where they're in slaves and I'm going to, you're going to take them to the promised land. And he went, no. No thanks. Good plan, but no. That no, 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 no. I couldn't possibly do that. No, thank you. Really nice offer, but no. And he made all of these excuses. And even in the reading that we saw, after God had done this thing with a stick, he still said, oh, no, no, I can't do that. Lots of us, when we get older, do exactly the same. But here he is. We've cut into this conversation between God and Moses. He's been told to go back, and he's making an excuse, and an excuse, and an excuse. And eventually, God says to him, what have you got in your hand? And he went, um, a stick. Now, it was a bigger stick, because it was a stick that, you know, it would be, it would be a tall th thing, quite heavy maybe, and he used it to help him to walk, and he used it to help him to, to bring the sheep back in if they, uh, if they were straying a wee bit. And in that country, they don't go behind the sheep, in Scotland, we go behind the sheep and we push them forward. In that country, what they do is they take the stick and they walk along and they tap the ground so that the sheep hear the tapping and they follow the sound. So it's a big stick, not just a little stick. But I couldn't get big sticks for everybody. I could only get little sticks for everybody. So, it's just a stick. And as we go through the rest of the talk, I'm going to ask you a few times uh, questions about the sticks. And when I do that, what I would like you to do is to hold up your stick and say together, no, it's just a stick. No. See, you've got it. Right? No, it's just a stick. So, Moses had his stick. Do you think there was anything special about it? No. But God told Moses to throw it on the ground. And he did. And in the story, what did it say it became? A snake. It became a snake. And then it says, and Moses ran away. Well, yes, wouldn't you just? Right? I mean, that's pretty obvious. Oh, look, my stick is now moving. Right? And it's got a sharp end that might bite me. Of course you're going to run away. Of course you would run away. So, there's Moses and the, the snake on the ground. And off he's, off he's running. And God had to say, stop, stop, Moses, come back and pick up the snake. Now, if any of you have ever watched a documentary about snakes, you don't pick it up by which end? Do you know, what end do you not pick it up by? No, it's the opposite end. You pick it up by the mouth end. Why would you pick it up with the mouth end? Because it can't bite you if you pick it up with that. So if you grab it just under its head, if, you, if you're ever having to wrestle a snake, here's, this is good advice for those of you who may be going on holiday, you don't need to wrestle snakes. Pick it up just under its head because then it can't turn and bite you. You don't pick it up by the tail because if you pick it up by the tail, it can, right, and that's you done. So God says to him, Moses, come back and pick up the snake by the tail. Why on earth? I mean, that just seems really stupid to me. And I suspect Moses looked at it and thought, that's not the right end. What will I do here? I think God was saying, Moses, do you know what? If you do what I tell you, I'll deal with the sharp end. You deal with the safe bit. I'll deal with the with the bit that might cause you difficulty. I'll deal with the bit that might cause you hassle. I'll deal with the hard bit. You deal with the easy bit. So then, he does. He picks up the snake, and it becomes a stick again. And I think also God is saying to him, you know, Moses, you've spent long enough running. Now just go on with what I've asked you to do. And I wonder if there's somebody here today who has had a word from God over the years for God has said, I want you to do this and you've done what Moses did and you've said, no thanks, you're all right. And today Moses is saying, now's the time 
to get on and do what I've asked you to do. So if you've been putting it off, today he's saying it's time to put aside your fear or whatever it is that's stopping you and get on with your calling. He'll deal with the difficult stuff. You just do what he's asked you to do. So God told Moses he had to confront his fear and to pick up the snake. And when he does, it becomes a stick again. Was it a magic stick? So eventually, Moses goes and he does what he's meant to do, and the Israelites are freed from slavery, and he leads them into the desert. Now, what do we know about the desert? Is it hot or cold? It's hot. It's very hot. So they're off and they're in the desert, and they've got all the animals, and they've got the carts, and the donkeys, and the camels, and whatever. There are hundreds of thousands of people in the desert. And they come to the Red Sea, and the Red Sea's quite deep. So they can't swim, because the stuff they've got would sink. They're stuck. And then, coming up behind them, we've got the very angry Egyptians. Dan, dan, dan. And you see in the film, they're getting closer and closer, and the people are beginning to sweat, not by the heat, by the worry. Right? So, what I want you to say now is, oh no, the Egyptians are coming. Oh no, the Egyptians are coming. Told you. They were all in a panic. So Moses says to God, God, what will we do? You've brought us out here and we're stuck. Literally, we can't go forward and the Egyptians are coming. What will we do? So what do you think he had to do? He did. He absolutely did. And how did he do that? Do you know? Absolutely. Brilliant. God said, hold up your stick. Hold up your stick. And when he did that, the wind blew and the sea parted and they were able to walk across on the dry ground. God saved them because Moses did what he was asked to do with his stick. Do you think the stick had some special water repelling coating? No. Three days later, they've had this amazing victory at the sea and they come to this place called Mara. And there's water there. And they need water because we're still in the desert and it's still really hot and they're still very thirsty. But the water there wasn't good to drink. Not good at all. And the people were very angry because they were very thirsty. So they said, oh, you've brought us out here and we're going to die of thirst in the desert. And Moses said, God, what will I do? And guess what's in this story? A stick! Who knew? Hey, a stick. And God said, a different stick this time. He said, go and find a stick and put it in the water. So Moses went off and he found a stick and he put it in the water and the water became good to drink. Did that stick have some magic healing power? No, it's only a stick. You see, sometimes God just takes something or someone ordinary and does something really amazing through it or through them. Many years later, there was a prophet called Elijah. You can read about that in 1 Kings chapter 17. He was told to go and find a widow and her son. A widow is an old-fashioned word for a woman whose husband has died. He found the woman, and guess what she was looking for? A stick. Well done, you've got the point. She was looking for, the, the old, the, the, the authorised version of the Bible says she was looking for two sticks. I don't really understand why she was only looking for two sticks. It doesn't explain it, I have no idea but she says she was looking for sticks. And she was looking for sticks to do something really odd that we wouldn't expect. Does anybody know what she was going to do? With She was going to light a fire. Absolutely she was. And do you know what she was going to do with the fire? Toast marshmallows. Toast marshmallows. Close. <laughs> Not quite. Anybody know what she was going to do with the sticks and the fire? She was going to make her last meal for her and her son. Because there was famine in the country. You know, famine means there's not enough food. So she had her la just a tiny little bit of flour left and a tiny little bit of oil left. And she was going to put them together and she was going to make some bread. And she was going to use the stick for the fire. And Elijah said to her, do you know what? Go and make the fire and make the bread, but bring me mine first. And if you do... Because that's a bit selfish, isn't it? 
That's all you've got left. Well, that's fine. Go and make me some, by the way. Seems a bit selfish, but he said, if you do, God will make sure that flower jar you've got and the water jar you've got will never be empty. As long as the rain stays away, you'll have oil and you'll have flour. And that's what she did, and that's what happened. Three years, there was no water. It never rained. And all that time, she had enough to eat for her and her son and for Elijah. Do you think there was anything special about the sticks that she gathered for the fire? No. And I have to say, I was not going to bring flour and oil, because that would have been a disaster. But there was nothing special about them either. Later, the prophet Elisha, you can read about in 2 Kings chapter 6, he was helping people build a school for prophets. And, oh, disaster. There, they're, they're chopping down the wood, and they're going to build the building, and they're chopping down the wood. And the metal top of the axe, the axe head, the sharp bit, came off, and it went shoop into the river. Straight into the river. And do you think it floated? No. No, because it's metal, and it sank. And you're, oh, no. What a disaster, because he had borrowed it. And in those days, it was really expensive. And he was thinking... Oh, I could end up having to work for the guy who owns the axe for the rest of my days to pay it back. Oh, no. What will I do? So he said to Elisha, what will I do? And Elisha, he got a stick. Funnily enough, he got a stick and he threw it into the water where the axe head had gone into the water. And then what do you think happened? The axe head came out. The axe head floated, and he was able to reach in and bring it out and fix the axe. Was it a magnetic floating stick? No. All of these stories have something in common. God took something ordinary, a stick, and he did something extraordinary with it. But he was able to do it because the people involved listened to what he said and then did it. The time will come for all of you as you grow up to have hard decisions to make. And you need to be ready for that time so that you know how to make good decisions. And one of the best ways of doing that, one of the best ways that we have of hearing from God is by reading his word the Bible. Some of you are going to get Bibles today, and I hope, I hope and pray that you take them away and that you read them. But there are Bibles available for every one of you, depend, regardless of your age, and every one of you also. I hope you take your Bible and you read it regularly. Every day is fantastic, but regularly uh, even is good. Because in it, God speaks, and in it, God gives us wisdom that we can use to make good decisions. It's not the only way God speaks, but it's one of the best ways. So we should be reading it regularly. You see, I think God wants us to give him the ordinary things in our lives. So when God says to me, what have you got in your hands? I could say, nothing. I don't have any money. I, I don't really have a good job. I don't really have a, I don't really have a, I don't really, we can make all the excuses. But sometimes we just need to say, do you know what? All I've got is a stick, God, but you can have it. We just need to trust God to use us in a way that he sees fit. Because when we do that, he'll do extraordinary things through us. I wonder how many of you think that you're going to do something absolutely brilliant for God in your life. I wonder how many of you think you're going to do something absolutely extraordinary and brilliant for God in your life. You're never too young and you're never too old. I just wanted to point that out, because some of you think, oh, do you know, I've done my bit. I've done my time. Caleb, we were thinking about uh, during the week. Caleb, he was 85 when he took his place, his bit of land in the promised land. 85 years old. And he didn't just get it given to him, handed to him on a plate. He had to go and fight for it. So 85 is not too old to be doing stuff for God. Just putting that out there, just in case you're worried about being too old. 
And also, you're never too young. God uses children to do amazing things, so just trust Him. As we come to communion, can I just say to, to parents, um, if you don't want your children to, to have communion, then would you come and get them and take them back to your seats during the next couple of songs? Otherwise, we will assume that you're happy for them to have communion uh, and uh, they can participate in that. And also, uh, for all of us, uh, I would ask that you hold on to the bread and, and wine. It's, it's not alcoholic um, um, for those who... Um, that's important. Uh, but can you hold on to it uh, as it's served, and then we will uh, eat and drink together uh, when we get to that point. We're going to sing uh, two songs uh, together now. First one is, is this little light of mine, and it's just a reminder that God gives us the ordinary stuff as well as the good stuff, the big stuff, and then an older hymn that just reminds us that we want to see God lifted high, uh, and that's him that we worship.
there are another two sticks that are mentioned in the Bible that I want to just point to. And they make that shape. Can you see what shape it is? What is it? It's a cross shape. There was nothing special about those two bits of wood. They were just bits of wood. But God did something extraordinary with those two pieces of wood. He allowed his son Jesus to give himself for us, to suffer the agony of crucifixion. And through that, to provide a way for you and I to become his children through faith in him. I don't know what happened to those two bits of wood. And it doesn't matter. Because the wood's not what's important. The nails is not what's important. Because it wasn't them that kept Jesus on the cross. It was his love for us that kept him there. And so let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you for the cross. We thank you that at the cross, Jesus dealt with sin on our behalf. We thank you that at the cross, he took the punishment that was rightfully ours. And he made a way for us to become your children. In dying and rising from the dead, he rose victorious over sin and death. And through faith in him, we have new life. Not, not just for the future, but for today and every day. That through his death and resurrection, Human beings have the, the possibility of forgiveness, of a new start, of hope where maybe there was no hope. And Father, we thank you that that is not a, a, a thing that we, we take lightly, nor is it something that, that just happens and you leave us on our own. When we come to you in faith, you say, yeah, you're going to be my children. You're going to be my child. I love you so much. And I'm going to give you Holy Spirit to help you to live in a way that's appropriate. And so, Father, we thank you for the cross. And we look forward to the day when we will not need to have this celebration meal together because we will see Jesus in all his glory. And we'll be with him and with you. But until then, we are commanded to meet together. And we're commanded to take bread and wine. And we're commanded to eat and drink and to remember the cross. And what was achieved by Jesus there. And so that's what we do today. And we say thank you. Thank you for the sacrifice. Thank you for the price that was paid. And thank you for the offer, the promise of new life and life in all its fullness. Father, we will take bread and we break it and we eat it. And we remember that it's a sign of your Jesus' body that was broken. And then we take wine and we remember it as a sign of Jesus' blood that was shed.
And we thank you that in that there is a new covenant that we can be part of. And so, Father, speak to us now in the quiet as we eat together and remember Jesus. Amen. So it was with friends around the table that Jesus took bread and broke it. And he passed it to them. And as he did, he said, take this and eat it. And as you do, remember me. And then he took a cup with wine and he passed it among them. And he said to them, take it and drink it. And as you do, remember my blood shed for you and that there's a new covenant for you and so we take we eat and we drink and we remember these are the gifts of God for the people of God
the body of Christ. the blood of Christ. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you for something so uh, simple and yet so profound. We thank you that we have Jesus. We thank you that we can come into your presence. We come as your children. And we know there are lots of times that we disappoint you. We know there are lots of times that we do what Moses did and we make excuses. And so, Father, we ask that you would forgive us for that and that you would fill us with your, your spirit and your power, that we would be able to serve you in the way that we long to do. Father, we thank you that through it all, you are just full of love and grace and forgiveness, overflowing with compassion and mercy. And we are the recipients of that. Amen. And so um, our Kingdom Kids children are going to lead us in a song from Micah uh, chapter 6 and verse 8. So if we can have all the Kingdom Kids coming up <clears throat> towards the middle of the middle and front of the, of the podium. We've been starting to learn some songs this year, um, just to, an easy way to grasp on to um, scriptural truths and just have them right there. It's, it's so much easier sometimes to remember something by song. So Good. the kids will sing the first time through, and then we'll join them on the second time. There's an echo. It's a really quite simple song, so I hope we all enjoy it together. <clears throat>
we see, you just, yeah, don't, just, just in fact, yes, you can stay there, that's ideal. And Ray is going to um, gift the names and the gifts. So first, let me start from the younger one. So Josie, can I? Oh, Josie's not there. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. So first. So first, David, go here. You can have a seat again. Oh, oh, here comes Josie. Oh, here comes Josie. 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 Hiya, Josie. Hiya. There you go, that's for you. Okay. And David. Oh, there you go. And Nathan. Nathan. <laughs> I would just have given you it anyway, okay? And then Iona? Goodness, Iona. Iona. Oh, Iona's in there. There you go, Iona. Bless you. And then Ethan. Oops. Ethan, there you go. Well done. Bless you. Eliola. Rachel. Rachel. I'll stretch over. Okay. And Kitty. Oh, Kitty. There you go. And next is Connie. Connie, there you go. Well done. And Naomi. Oh, watch your head. <laughs> <laughs> Rory. Shall we? I'll stretch over. I'll stretch over there. Lily? Elsa. Elsa, thank you. There you go. And. Joel? I hope you read that. Right, read it. I'm going to ask you questions on it, right? And Isaac. Isaac's down there. Oh, Isaac, he's there. there. Probably ask you questions on it too, right? Read it. <laughs> and Sky. Thank you. Thank you. Elise. Thank you. Ben. Thank you. And John. John. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, that's all. Okay, and. Turn this way, see so you. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. the leaders. The leaders. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, rather than embarrass the leaders by getting them up, um, we have something for all of the leaders. We will give you that. Uh, so don't go away without it if you're a leader, right? We've got something for you too. But um, I just wanted to say to, uh, to all of you who are here, um, we are really glad to have you as part of this church and what we do here. And we hope that you uh, will help us to find ways that we can get you to, to be involved more, that we can help you and encourage you uh, to uh, learn a bit more about faith and about Jesus uh, and, and walk with him. And we hope that we can help you to do that. But also to the leaders uh, who are all over the place today, thank you for the time and the talent and the energy and the commitment that you make all through the year to help our young people uh, to learn and to grow uh, it's, a, it's a huge thing. And to Ray also, who started uh, in January, officially started in January. Um, it's been a bit of a learning curve, but thank you too for all back to see. But remember to sing this song with us. Don't just be reading your book. <laughs> thank you, watch your head. Let's sing together the, the final song, In Christ Alone. <clears throat> <clears throat>
And so go into whatever faces you today and the rest of this week and beyond, but go standing in Christ because he is all you're ever going to need. And as you go, may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Spirit be with you and those whom you love now and always. Amen. Amen. Mm.